we all have been hearing we all have been using ai knowingly or unknowingly by way of using machines which use ai so that's how ai started getting into our lives is ai going to replace our jobs without human intelligence there is no ai there are a few limitations as well as i mentioned it cannot simply replace or displace a human mind that is of prime importance you always need an engineer at the end of it to understand whether your model is or your algorithm is right i'm rakesh rakesh devlapalli about 28 years of experience uh, predominantly into the design and development of rolling stock equipment rolling stock is uh, nothing but your trains transportation systems so most of the products which are into the indian railways or into the global oems like uh, bombardier alstom siemens uh, who manufacture uh, trains and uh, equipment which are the transportation sector so i i worked on many of the products into it i am basically an electronics engineer and uh, started using ai about 8 10 years uh, from here uh, started with python basic then started into llm deep learning uh, gen ai and kinds of stuff again to augment and to enhance product depth so that's how uh, my my activity is delivered different uh, projects across the globe as as ma'am was pointing it out uh, spent some time in japan about a year spent about uh, two years in australia four four and a half years in uk working at the customer location and then uh, delivering products forget about the core skills that's all management side of it team leadership and uh, stakeholder engagement these are part and parcel of the job once you start growing up into the ladder uh, you automatically get into these kind of things but that's not the for technical uh, aspects of uh, the designs is where my contributions predominantly go into so i work as the principal engineer in quest global quest global is a design services organization based in singapore i have a few slides which i'll go through probably in the later stages where i'll give a slight exposure towards quest and what quest does not going details into it but just to give an overview of what we do and i, I as i said i i passed out from nit varangal in 1995 uh, msc uh, tech in electronics that's a three years degree which uh, uh, nit offers and uh, there are three specializations into it uh, electronics instrumentation and optical engineering so i i come from the electronics background we we, we all have been hearing we all have been using ai knowingly or unknowingly by way of using machines which use ai so that's how ai started getting into our lives now it has become a part and parcel of each of our activity to put it in simple terms what we are trying to use is or what we are trying to put ai into perspective is ask the machine to learn give some knowledge into it and then try to get some meaningful information out of it so ai is just a tool please remember that ai is just a tool it's helping us to develop or to get gain more insights into product development into engineering into software development or whatever you call it as and one fundamental question which i always get in is is ai going to replace our jobs that's a standard question which i i always get plain answer no ai is not going to replace any one of the jobs it's going to help you in getting in a better way designing products in a better way help you understand with large chunks of data which probably a human brain cannot compute in a very faster way there these tools comes into picture whatever tool you you talk it about in terms of ai or in terms of machine learning modeling or in terms of language large language models deep learning generative ai these are all different parts and parcels of the entire activity but it's only helping you out in getting the things done in a better way it's not going to replace human intelligence no way never you always need a human brain at the end of the day one one classic example which 
probably you might have heard about a few few weeks back i believe uh, three of the guys were uh, traveling in a in a car and then uh, they were using google maps and it took them through a bridge and then it has thrown them off from the bridge into a gorge and all the three of them died so again without human intelligence there is no ai just relying on ai to do your things and then forgetting about human intelligence doesn't make any sense so take out these two things as the key takeaways your jobs your future the activity related to whatever you are learning whatever you are going to do in the industry is based on your intelligence ai will only aid and then help you in making things better that's basically in sectors like healthcare most of the ai is being used finance in banking sector on insurance ai is being used then transportation as as i dwell through in one of the case studies what is it doing it's it's improving the efficiency that's it it's instead of an individual sitting on and then doing a job manually ai is helping us to do it in quicker times but again your prompt engineering what you call or what you use into chat gpt until and unless you give a right prompt you're not going to get a right answer so chat gpt throws many errors we have seen many errors coming in from chat gpt as well so don't rely on it and again your intelligence comes into on to prompt engineering where you put up some things into a, as a question then chat gpt tries to do some research out of the available information and then throw you a right answer which probably again you need to understand whether it makes sense to you or not if not then again you have to reframe the question and then give it to it so that you you again get a better answer again human intelligence is of prime importance if you don't want to look into ai as a tool you are going to lose everything out of it if you start using or if you start looking ai as a tool to enhance your performance but still use your brains is going to help you in a lot and, uh, because it's still evolving uh, i would not say it as completely uh, a, a structured way which is right now available and then put in uh, it's still evolving so there are a lot of things which people will be learning which people will be implementing uh, they will try to start uh, pushing things into the next stage where an enhanced modeling and enhanced uh, version of gpts or uh, or uh, various internal functions come into picture and then help things in a better way so it's an evolving field and uh, you you you're all into the early stages of your education so getting into the next 2 3 years you will see a lot of changes coming into and uh, try to grasp as much of information as possible try to learn as many things as possible and then try to see how it can be applied into the real life conditions that's the basic need at the end of the hour even uh, from an industry perspective uh, last 30 years i have been working and uh, everywhere at the end of the day what is the quality product which you are delivering to the customer matters what is the kind of struggle which you are doing at your end what is the kind of learning upskilling reskilling which you are doing doesn't really bother the client at the end of the day so delivering the goods to the satisfaction of the customers becomes the prime importance and ai will definitely add value probably you are all coming out from this uh, computer science background so it will be more useful to you in terms of coding in terms of uh, evaluating in terms of validation verification testing and how better your codes can be generated how better your algorithms can be generated and how better they will be able to help the uh, fraternity engineering fraternity at the end that is how you should see ai as in the current circumstances so uh, personal assistants recommendation systems autonomous vehicles these are all some of the examples of how we are using ai into the day to day life uh, but uh, one one fundamental thing is it's going to reshape our tomorrow that is for sure how in better ways in in implementing things in a better way in understanding or un making things understand in a better way ai works that's how we, generally where we start with we we define the problem so what is the problem statement you come out with some issue what is that which you need to be solving what is that either either it is a performance based issue or it's a functional based issue or anything kind of thing you define a problem 
Then, based on that problem statement, you collect data. Data science again comes into as one of the augmentations for AI because elementary mathematics, computational uh, mathematics is of prime importance again. Understanding mathematics, knowledge of mathematics, getting better in mathematical uh, solutions is again of uh, importance. Uh, don't underestimate mathematics as, as one of the subjects which you have left it in your uh, classes, earlier classes. It, it, it will follow you till you get into the job, till you deliver the products, and then till you retire. Uh, mathematics is going to stay with you, your calculus, integral calculus, and then integrations, everything. If you want to use AI, if you want to be into this field, come into engineering and then develop products, mathematics or, or knowledge of mathematics is important. So data collection, you have large chunks of data. So you have to give uh, information to the model, make it understand, give data to this model, how model interprets it, and then how it really throws out your result is your data uh, collection and preparation. You write an algorithm, you use some language. Uh, I think you're all working with Python right now. So you use some library in Python, uh, put some language into it, put some uh, coding into it, and then come out with some algorithm which says, do this way, do this point, first this, next this and next this. That's how you, you structure your program and then put it into an algorithm. Then train the model. Now this is where AI comes into picture or the la large language models and LLMs comes into picture. So you train the model in such a way that it interprets the data in the way you want it to be interpreted. That's where training the model comes in. Then evaluating model performance. This is nothing but your validation part of it where you, where you do a validation, recheck to understand whatever algorithm which you have put in, whether it makes sense or not. Getting into the final aspects of optimization, you fine tune it, you rewrite it, or you do some kind of a, um, adjustments into the programming algorithm and then start fine tuning it, then deploying. And finally, some kind of an ethical consideration. You do it in an ethical way. This is how basic AI works. And is it a standard format which every model works in? Not really. It all depends on how you tailor it to the requirement and to the understanding and to, to get the final solution. This is a standard format of how AI works, but it need not be same for every model, for every product or for every design. Applications, there are a lot of applications. You might have seen uh, many things coming out. Uh, and and uh, the basic advantage is wherever there is some kind of a repetitive task, you, you put a model and then you put some kind of algorithm into it and then it starts redoing it. It's helping in many ways in the medical sector, as I mentioned, in healthcare and in finance, in banking sectors. There is a lot of activity going on in uh, data analytics. That is where your data science uh, knowledge comes into picture. There is a lot of chunks and chunks of predictive maintenance analysis which is being done. And uh, engineering fraternity is taking a lot of help from A in terms of data analysis and then using that data in a constructive and positive way. There are a few limitations as well, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, it cannot simply replace or displace a human mind. Uh, that is of prime importance. You always need an engineer at the end of it to understand whether your, your model is, or your algorithm is right, your model is making sense, or anything is. It, please see it as a tool which, which, uh, which is helping or which is trying to help you out in designing systems in a better way. But again, not as a replacement for human intelligence. Coming from a computer science engineering perspective, so where does AI come in? So in software development, uh, you use tools like GitHub and Copilot Assist and coding supports in validation and uh, testing and debugging, finding errors, finding faults in a better way. Data science and big data, yeah. Uh, massive data wherever uh, you get it in. Uh, there are chunks and chunks and loads and tons of data coming in. So as a, a human, we have some limitations in consuming that data and then putting it into a right uh, format. AI is helping us to do it in a uh, regressive way. There are stock market predictions also, people uh, doing a lot of things into it. But again, uh, your, your human intelligence uh, comes in at the end of the day to 
decide to go for it or not go for it. Banking sector is using it in the right way. Threat detection, again, cyber security. This is of prime importance in the current situations where uh, we are working on uh, for uh, with AI algorithms and uh, on, on preventing phishing attacks and whatnot. You hear a lot of uh, issues coming out uh, on a cyber attack each and every day. So there's a lot of uh, activity going on. Going forward, expandable AI, that is again quantum AI and expandable AI and AI in edge computing, that is going to be coming out in the next few years where real application of it into the engineering is going to start. But as of now, it's still in the developmental stages. People are using it, but in the nascent stages of it. But over a period of time, say two to three years, you will see uh, the, the growth going in leaps and bounds. At the end of the day, any engineering organization, any industry, any, any organization where you are going to work for with your degree, with your knowledge, with your skill set or with your competency is going to see you as an engineer who can use AI tools with human touch, with human insights into it to understand and to design and to develop products, projects, work on things in a better way. That is of prime importance. So people are still still of that opinion or, or that they have that at the back of their mind that AI can do everything. AI will not be able to do everything without human intervention, without human intelligence. So organizations still ask you to go through an interview. They still ask you questions. They still ask you to answer those questions. And only based on those things, they offer you. Uh, your chat GPT is not going to help at the interview process. Maybe it will help you to get into that level. But after that, once you go and then sit on with a one-on-one -on -one interview with the interviewer, your human intelligence and your knowledge and skill set into applying AI into the day-to-day -day life is going to help. So start looking at it from that perspective. Start uh, implementing things, your projects, your, your uh, whatever activity which you are doing it. Put them into structures in such a way that it will be helpful to you when you go into the industry, when you start uh, working on as engineers into the industry and start contributing into it. What is in for you when you, when you go into the industry? What are What is the industry trend? How, how AI engineers or people with AI skill set are being looked for? Machine learning engineer, this is one of the hottest uh, job opportunities. Data scientist is another one. So everybody is, is after uh, data analysis and then uh, data scientist and then maintenance, predictive maintenance, understanding large chunks of big data. AI research scientist, there's a lot of work which is still going on. So there's a lot of activity uh, which needs to be done. Computer vision engineer, another uh, form of AI where uh, you have uh, things in a better way, uh, where you uh, develop systems that are that are enabling machines to understand it in a better way. So you have your computer vision engineer. NLP specialist, again, is one of the opportunities which is coming out in the recent terms in a better way. Uh, so you have an opportunity to devise your career. Then there is one guy called as a product manager who does everything into it, which includes the program management part of it. Skill sets, you know, Mathematics, statistics, R, Python, MATLAB, depending upon what career which you are going to choose. OpenCV kind of thing for your computer vision, then image processing kind of thing specifically for the, the computer vision engineers. Some kind of communication skills, knowledge, and then uh, talkativeness for the product manager kind of thing. So define a goal where you are going to be after four years, how you want your uh, career to be structured, what is that uh, three-year plan, seven-year plan, 12-year plan? If you put it that way, then uh, you can understand better and then you can start learning things, skilling or upskilling yourself in those lines. But industry is looking for different kinds of roles. We are looking for people who can come and then help us in understanding and designing the products better by using AI.